My picture is tilted sideways, but it's okay. All right, so we all have fallback jobs. We all think to ourselves, if worse comes to worse, I can always go back to waiting tables, or if worse comes to worse, I can always go back to temping. For me, when those thoughts enter my head, it better be damn close to December, because my fallback job is Christmas trees. People think carnies run tree lots. They would ask that question, where are you from? Which is a really nice way of saying, you are the cleanest carny I have ever seen. <laughs> I've been selling and delivering Christmas trees for over 15 years now. It started in high school, and I continued to work at the Christmas tree lot during my winter breaks in college. Even when I finished school and got a real job, I still spent my December weekends at the tree lot to make a little extra money. It's at this point that I should probably explain that I don't just work at whatever lot is setting up on whatever vacant corner is around. I go straight to the jugular with my Christmas tree career. I work at the tree lots in Rancho Santa Fe. <laughs> These are the people that don't flinch at paying four to five hundred dollars for a Christmas tree. Passing a twenty dollar tip for the delivery, it's no big deal. They have twelve foot ceilings, so of course they need an eleven foot tree. I mean, an eight-foot tree would look ridiculous. <laughs> We're entertaining this year, Hal. We need at least a 10-foot tree. What would the neighbors think? Since they're paying a premium on these Christmas trees, they had to be flawless. Puffs, we would call them. When you cut the twine, they pop open like a tube of Pillsbury dough. The trees had to be perfectly straight, shaped perfect, no holes, no bare spots, <laughs> radiant green, smelling like a pine forest. No less than perfection would suit these people. And I worked it. I hustled trees. I threw them in the back of my truck and drove them out to the mansions of Rancho Santa Fe, followed trophy wives in velour jumpsuits, past tennis courts and eight-car garages. Turn the tree this way. Now turn the tree that way. Move it over to frame it in the window. No back. Now hide that spot. It's tilting just a bit. I had all the tricks for straightening it out, maneuvering it through the tight spots, upstairs, setting up straight every time, all to make these rich people happy. All for that dirty little tip. I used to think to myself, what if I could deliver Christmas trees year-round? How could I convince the masses that it was important to have a dead tree in your living room at all times? <laughs> it was in my late 20s, probably my 10th year working at the tree lots, and I started to wonder, what's next? I'd already cycled through two soul-sucking corporate jobs and wasn't quite sure what to do with my life. On one hand, I didn't go to school and get straight A's in high school and go to college only to sell Christmas trees, but I didn't do all that to sit in a cubicle and work some bullshit job either. It was one year around this time I decided to go to church. I thought, this is the point in life when people turn to religion. They wait in traffic or in line at the grocery store, asking themselves, is this all part of God's plan? The church choir was singing up on the big screen. They displayed the lyrics. I could sing of your love forever. 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 The slide changed, and now it said, I could sing of your love forever. Sing it with me! I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. That's enough. Some woman began to sing Oh Holy Night over the repeating chorus. She had the idea, she presented it to the group, and they accepted it as something they would do because it didn't, didn't sound bad. And thank God they did this too because there I was at a crucial moment of my life and the whole mass of Christianity appeared to me as a group of artless hacks. I decided then and there to make the selling and delivering of Christmas trees into an art and a science. If you pulled your SUV up to my tree lot, you would buy a tree. You might wander around with your latte, looking at the different trees, let your Bichon hop around in the mud. But in a couple minutes, I'll come over, and I'll have you convinced that what stands before you right now is the essence of arboreal perfection. The tree is so full, it makes Manhattan look like a ghost town. Pythagoras himself could not have envisioned a more conical, perfect conical shape. There are religious sects in China devoted to the worship of this very hue of green. 
The scent of this tree will make your maid stop stealing from you. The top of this tree is so straight and perfect that when you put your angel up there, it will come to life and bestow a blessing on each and every member of your family, your wife, your kids, your Corvette, your lawyer, your mistress, and stock portfolio. Later this evening, I will deliver this Christmas tree, Christmas tree to your house. You'll watch me move and realize that I am a well-oiled machine. There's no finer set of DNA than mine to bring this tree into your house. I shake out the needles in your front lawn, take off my shoes before I come in, single-handedly maneuver this Christmas tree through the door, down the hall, up the stairs, through the living room, never scratching a wall, never knocking over a lamp, never getting a drop of sap on your couch. From the minute you bought this tree, I took note of the good side, the side you want in front, and I had it all planned out. I planned out the route I would take in your house, all to put that tree up so it's straight, perfect, the good side facing out, so I can get that wow factor, because that's where I make my money. You won't even know what hit you. You remember last year how your husband clumsily dragged the tree halfway in and couldn't get it up straight in the stand. He had to run down to Home Depot to hire a couple guys to help him take it back outside and get it straightened up again. After I bring in your tree, you'll think to yourself, that was awesome. I better give this guy a 20. I didn't even step on your dog. Out there, an SUV is waiting, waiting for the rain to stop, waiting for me to come out to invite you onto my lot to help you find the perfect Christmas tree, to bring it to your house and set it up in your front room and watch the kids get excited, the parents get nostalgic, and the cat gets scared. <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking Christmas tree, but I'm good. I'm real good at Christmas trees. That's my skill. That's what I got. Nathan Young.